So uh, as Benjamin was uh, mentioning, uh, we are basically trying to solve three different use cases. One is uh, collaboration with the team, then bringing out efficiency, and then we finally have to deal with the innovation part. So these three are the main pillars for Iris uh, workspace. So as Benjamin was explaining, uh, we are trying uh, to narrow down or tackle these core issues what we are facing. So uh, let me take an example of Iris Foundry. As you can see in my screen, you have a bunch of uh, features or maybe products which are available here, part of Iris Foundry, uh, starting with uh, predictive asset intelligence, and then you move on to PNID, and then you have custom dashboards where you have KPIs and so on. Now, all of these individual uh, applications, right? So all of it has potential information related to a specific asset, gives, giving you more insight and depth into the problem statement, right? But what we are trying to do is trying to move this specific interest or the specific information into the collaborative workspace, or in other words, Iris workspace, and then try to collaborate as a team and in the most efficient way, and then also introduce innovation to it. I'll speak in a bit about what innovation I'm referring to, but quickly, I'll, uh, without wasting much time, I'll quickly jump to the dem demo. So I'll directly head into the application APM. Okay, so what I'm referring to is I'm looking at an asset A2 BFP, where the health score is 65%, which is not doing great. And then you also have the historical score trends, and then you also have the alerts which is uh, being recorded. So I'll start with here. Probably I want to take a screenshot of this and move to my workspace. I'll click on add to existing workspace because for the interest of time, I've already created a, a workspace. So I'll click on webinar demo. And I have already opened a new tab called webinar demo, and you can see it's already come into the workspace. You can do this or uh, if you have not opened it, you get a prompt at the bottom. By clicking on it, you should be able to open a separate tab which has the collaborative workspace. Now I can go ahead and click on, now if I want to capture the latest alerts, I'll do the same operation. Click on the webinar demo. And then when I move here, this is already a comment to the workspace. Now, if I want to do further analysis, I'll click on the alerts part. I'll click on view details. I'll click on analysis. And then I'll click on the multi-channel view. So this will actually give you a granular view of uh, how the measurements were being captured. And I'll narrow down to a specific uh, uh, channel. Let's say I want to focus only on these two channels. So I'll select this and select the next channel and now that i have captured three uh, information starting with uh, the health score the uh, the alerts information and the multi channel viewer which is nothing but the assets information now i'll head over to the collaborative workspace here once i come in you see all the information available in one common space and so I'm going to quickly say, like, uh, how do I share this? Now, let's say uh, I want to invite a uh, 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 field agent to start collaborating on it. So I can click on the share button, and then you get a copy link. You can copy this, and you can share it with whomever you want, and it can be publicly accessible. And anyone who is able to access this link should be in a position to collaboratively work on this specific workspace. Now, in the interest of time, Benjamin has already logged in. You can see uh, it also shows the list of users who are actively participating. This is in real uh, 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 real time. So uh, you can see uh, all the operation what Benjamin is trying to do. He can go ahead and arrange this uh, workspace according to his interest. Let's say he wants to start reading the health score, and then he wants to then look into the latest select, and then he wants to look into the multi-channel view. So he can go ahead and do that, and he can also 
put some annotations, whatever he wants. Now, let's say he wants to uh, start using all these web elements. You see, you have a control bar at the top. I'll start uh, speaking about this in a bit, but what he can do is he can use start using these arrows and he can st start annotating this workspace in such a fashion it gives some meaning to the elements which is already added. He can also go ahead and annotate this multi-channel line. For example, let's say he sees an anomaly here on this uh, trend line, right? So he can select any web element which is of his interest and then he can highlight it and then he can also point out what is the defect. He can also go ahead and click on the text input. He can click on the text element and then he can start typing uh, any information which is makes meaning and which gives much relevance to, for the rest of the team. All right. So moving on, uh, you also have a host of uh, elements which you can add part of this workspace. Uh, you have the square rectangle, you have the diamond, you have the ellipse, you have the arrow as well as the line, and you also have the draw thing. So you, this is a free form text you can draw and it also has pressure sensitivity. It is also uh, compatible on uh, iPad and tablet. You can work on um, any handle devices. And then uh, moving on, uh, you also can save this. This is auto save. The entire thing, whatever you work, is auto saved. But you can always go ahead and create n number of new workspaces. I can click on create workspace, and it will ask you what is the name, and then you can create a workspace. And then the similar way, you can go ahead and share it with your uh, colleagues or any stakeholders. And uh, let me get back uh, to the control panel. So uh, now let's look at the, the next feature. Uh, we have the image uh, icon. So this is basically about uh, uploading an image. So I'm going to click on this image icon. And I'm going to select uh, a gearbox image, which I have already stored. Just give me a second. All right, so you can upload any images uh, of your interest, and then you can uh, bring it to the workspace for collaboration. Now, the best part about this image is it can be resized, it can be rotated. That's the usual stuff. Uh, but you can also uh, do some cool features like uh, make use of AI uh, to do some analysis. That's the part which I was speaking about innovation. I'll speak about that in a minute. Uh, uh, before that, I would likely quickly jump onto the PDF and then uh, I'll speak about the AI part. Now, I'll click on the PDF part. PDF is again a similar as similar to the image. I'm going to upload a document called Bearing Maintenance and click on Open. Right, so you get the PDF uploaded, and this can be opened in a separate tab by double clicking on it. You should be able to open it. Once I double click, you can open the PDF in a separate window, and you can read through it. Now, what I'm going to do is, let's say this is a hundred-page document, right? Let me go to the last page. Okay. So this has a context called creepy, right? So I'm going to make use of uh, AI to read through the document and give me the information related to creepy. So you, once I select the PDF uh, element, you have a icon called AI. So once I click on it, uh, you get a context, or more or less a prompt. So you can type anything what you want, what information you want. By default, you have a placeholder called summarize the document which will summarize the entire document and give you uh, the context of it. So let's start with this, and then we'll try to refine uh, the same prompt. So I'll click on Generate. So once I click on Generate, uh, the entire document is sent to an AI engine, and then it processes uh, the PDF, and it gives you a summary. Just bear with me for a few seconds. It should be getting the results shortly. All right, so there you go. So you get a, a summary of the PDF. You can see here, uh, the key details it's mentioning that booklet amount care and maintenance of pairing and then it goes on right but let's say i want to uh, be specific about a certain thing let's say I summarize the document uh, more on creeping all 
Okay, so you here you see that uh, it is giving me more information related to only the things which I've asked. So it is saying it is emphasizing more on tripping, and then you have the information which is related to it. And you can also modify this prompt like any other AI prompt, like limiting your uh, output to 50 words or maybe 100 words or any length. Now, the best part is once you've analyzed this, you want to add it as a sticky note. I'll click on add to sticky note. So this gets this information gets saved into the sticky note. So when I click on this, we get all the information here. Right? So similarly, I'll jump back to image. Now, this image can also be sent to an AI where you can get some meaningful insights from this image. Now, let's say I want to quickly jump into a tool called Flame Tool. So I'm going to select this image. And then similar to what I showed, you have an AI engine. And you have a default prompt called what is in, what's in this image and so on and so So I'm going to click on generate, go with the default prompt. So the response what you get is, uh, the image shows a close up view of, view of the care, which in, in, is an in, industrial asset and so on, right? It also speaks about fitting. You can see it has surface wear, it has spitting, it has scoring, and so on. So this set of image analysis or vision uh, analysis is crucial because let's say uh, you are not aware of analyzing uh, the picture. This comes in very handy. So I can go ahead and click on sticky note and this information is stored here. So for the next person who comes in for collaboration, he doesn't need to know anything about it. He just has to click on this and he gets all the information what he wants. I'll move on uh, to the next thing. So you also have something called threaded comments. So I'm going to click on this comment. I can place it wherever I want and I can say uh, what's So I ask a question, what's your opinion on this? And uh, probably I can ask, I can address it to Benjamin or I can ask someone else to uh, uh, answer this. And then uh, uh, let's say uh, Benjamin is parallelly uh, working on this workspace. And let's say he has typed in some response. Uh, Benjamin, can you do that? Yes. All right. So when I click on this, you see that you need a, you need to make a repair, right? So all of this information uh, and delegation gets captured in the threaded comments. And this is totally infinite. You can place it anywhere in the canvas. You can place it a number of times, right? So, and all of this is captured in near re real time. So as he's collaborating, you can see this image is moving. Uh, uh, Benjamin is trying to help me by uploading a PNID diagram uh, so that we can start analyzing on it. He's also going ahead and annotating it so that uh, my interest or maybe my attention is uh, where it's supposed to be. All right. And similar to what I did for the uh, gearbox pitting, I can also select this PNID image and then I can send it to an AI for identification of each uh, elements as well as assets part of this uh, PNID. Okay. So I'll move to the next uh, uh, section where you have text to diagram. These two are AI features. I'm going to click quickly jump into text to diagram. Sure, uh, uh, it's more like a, a chat GPT kind of a prompt where you can ask uh, to generate generic questions. Say, for example, let's say I want a pie chart to be generated. So once I click on pie chart and I click generate, I get a pie chart. Now, let's say I want to modify the contents of it. I can either, I can be very specific saying these are my uh, options. That is category A, category B, and category C should be of this percentage. Or I can click on view as mermaid, and then I can go ahead and change this. It's just a textual notation, and you can always go ahead and change. Let's say I change it from uh, category uh, X, category Y, and category Z, and then it reflects. And once you're happy with it, you click on this, and this, this gets this visualization gets added to the canvas, right? So 
I'll quickly get back. And let's say uh, I want to build complex uh, uh, data. Like I already have the data, but I want to visualize it as well. I don't want to manually go and modify it. So in the interest of time, I have uh, a prompt which uh, I've already created. Let's quickly look at this. So I'm, I'm instructing uh, the AI generate a mermaid graph of gearbox, gearbox monitoring system with the following details, right? And then you have the data sources, analysis type, health index, and then a risk assessment. These are very relevant to the industrial use case. And then I also mentioned that green, yellow, red for uh, low risk, medium risk, and high risk. And I click on generate. Okay, and there you go. And you get a, uh, a graph, which is uh, relevant to what we are looking for. And then I can go ahead and insert it. All right. And uh, at any point in time, if you feel that uh, this has to be modified, you can always go and modify it. So you can double click on any one of the element and you can change it, you can delete it. And it's like any other uh, annotations what you have done on the canvas. So everything is based as a SVG element. So you have high flexibility of modifying and editing the annotations, whatever is being on, done on the workspace. All right. So I'll quickly uh, go to the next section, uh, which is called Web Embed. So probably I can zoom out. At the bottom, you have zoom in, zoom out. So I'll just zoom out so that I get some extra space and move to the bottom. Now this Web Embed is like, uh, sorry, my bad. So Web Embed is something similar to, uh, you can embed an iframe, you can embed, uh, embed a video, it can be, for now, we support YouTube as well as Vimeo. Uh, it can also support uh, embedding 3D models. Now, for example, we spoke about uh, uh, the gearbox fitting of, uh, image. Now, let's say uh, we want to uh, uh, bring in a 3D model of the industrial plant, or maybe we want to bring in a 3D model of a gearbox so that it gives more perspective for any uh, uh, specialist who's looking into this workspace. So let me go here, click on this. All right. Click on Web Embed and I'll place it here. And then I'm supposed to get a, a Embed link from either from YouTube or from Vimeo. So I'll start with YouTube, uh, that is a video, and then I'll show you how, to, how you can do embedding a 3D model. So in the interest of time, uh, I have already uh, copy, copied a link from Vimeo. I'm gonna paste it here. So once I paste it, you instant, instantaneously get uh, the video loaded and you can always go ahead and click and uh, you can see the video play. All of this is happening right on top of the uh, workspace. All right, so I'm going to pause this. Uh, the same thing works for a YouTube video as well. Now I'm going to quickly jump into uh, how I can uh, embed a 3D model. Um, okay. okay, I have another workspace which I already added it. So probably I'll quickly jump into that workspace. So you see here, uh, we have two uh, uh, 3D models, which is which we have loaded. And uh, we have uh, loaded this 3D uh, prototype models. One of it is a gearbox. Another one is your uh, industrial plant setup. Okay. So, the cool part about this uh, is we can interact with this 3D model. I'll double click on it and I can rotate it. I can zoom in, zoom out, and I can also zoom into a specific asset so that I can visualize it. Uh, so in this current version, we are supporting uh, uh, interaction with the entire workspace. 
and uh, you can the same thing applies even for this uh, gearbox. Sorry, my bad. Yeah. Yeah. So this same thing can be imported into our workspace. So let me quickly jump back to the to our older workspace. Okay. All right, so moving on. Uh, finally, I think uh, uh, we have a wireframe to code, uh, which is basically similar to what we showed. Like we can select the entire document and then send it to an AI to summarize the whole thing. Um, and then uh, we have libraries. So under library, we have a host of icons as well as uh, uh, assets which are relevant to specific use case. For example, let's say we speak about architecture diagram. We have all the icons which is required for us to start annotating it. I quickly go into a few of those, like you have Microsoft 360 icons, and then you have basic wireframe, UX wireframing, and then we also have PNID at the bottom uh, for annotating. And then uh, lastly, uh, I would like to say is uh, this part. You can always go ahead and make use of all these features like help. You have themes, dark theme, bright theme, and then you also have command palettes where you can go through all the features, whatever is being listed part of this workspace. And uh, finally, we have the export image where once you click on this, the entire uh, annotations, whatever was being worked on, can be downloaded as a P PNG or as a SVG. Or it can also be copied to clipboard where you can put it on any of the documents which you're working on. 